Hi, Greg Hughes here from 90 Second Website Builder. This tutorial is an introduction to CSS3 animations. Now using animations with 90 Second Website Builder is one of the most powerful features built into the software, but it is a topic in and of itself that warrants a whole series of videos. So I emphasize that this is an introduction to animations because there's no way to cover it fully in one succinct video. So let's, let's do an overview or an introduction and we'll look at some ways to use animations. In other videos, I'll show you some really cool tricks and some other things you can do to create your own animations. But for now, let's talk a little bit about what they are and how they work. First of all, an animation is a way of applying a special effect to an object on your page. When the page loads, you can make an object move, animate, spin, rotate, fall down, whatever you want it to do. There's almost an endless series of things you can do with animations. And animations can be applied to any number of web page objects. You'll probably use animations mostly with text and images, but you can also use animations with things like layers and form objects. Anytime you double click on an object like I am here and go to its properties, this happens to be an image, and you see a tab that says CSS3 animation, that means animation can be applied to this particular object. If you don't see that tab, then animation doesn't apply to that. So this is a text object. If I right click on it and go to object properties, you'll see that there is an animation tab, which means we could utilize that. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna be working with an image. That's pretty common and you'll get the idea no matter uh, what you work with. However, what an animation does will largely depend on the object you're working with. So there are animations that are specifically for text objects and some that are specifically for images, as you'll see as we move along. I'm going to work with this image object right here and go to the tab like we did a few seconds ago. Currently, there are no animations here. The way we add an animation is by clicking this button and we can select from a list of animations. Now, before we move forward, let's talk about this list and where it came from. I could go to the animation manager by clicking this button. There's another way I can get there. I'm gonna show you that if we go up to the tools and we go into the corner of the screen and click on animation manager, that's another way to get to this list. Either way, it's important to know where the animations are for the future. For now, and like I say, in this video, we're just gonna work with these preset animations that are already built into the software for you. In another video, I'll show you how to build your own, usually from one of these pre-built ones, because what you can do is you can choose an animation, you can copy it, and create your own from this. You'll click on edit, and you'll change the parameters for that animation, and as you do, you can have a preview of how it works. But again, for this video, let's talk about just the ones that exist in the system already, rather than creating your own. So back to the image. When I double click on the image and I go to the animation tab, if I want to add an effect to this object, I click the add button and I select the animation that I want to use. Now let's just for fun, let's do a few so you can get the idea because the combinations here are virtually endless. We could go on for hours, if not days, playing with all of the possible configurations of an animation. So let's, let's just start right here at the top with animate background. As you can see, this animation only applies to something that would have a background, like an image. And these are the settings that you're presented with. Duration is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds means one second. We want this animation to occur in one second. That's how long it takes for the animation to go from point A to point B, in other words. Iteration means how many times we want the animation to occur. And when this is negative one, that means infinite. That's why this preview of the animation doesn't stop. It keeps going and going because it's set on infinite. If we only want it to happen once, we change this to a one. And you can see the animation happened once and it stopped. Or if we wanted it to go two, three, four, let's say five times, the animation would occur five times and then it would stop. Now, in this case, all of the animations we're gonna be working with start when the page loads. There are other ways to trigger animations that are more advanced, like through an event. So you could click on an object or scroll down to a, a certain part of a page to trigger an animation. In this 
introduction to animations, we're just gonna be looking at ones that are triggered when the page loads. The other thing you can do is you can decide on the direction of the animation. If you want it to go in the normal direction, or if you want it to go back and forth from point A to point B, point B to point A, or if you want it to just go backwards, or if you want it to alternate. So we'll look at some of those things in some better examples too. Also, we can decide if we want the animation to delay once the page loads, if we don't want it to trigger right away, if we want it to delay so many seconds, then we could do that here. So if we set this to five, and then we loaded the page, the animation would start after five seconds. And in most cases, we want the play state to be running. The reason why pause exists is for another advanced technique we'll talk about later. For the most part, these are the only settings you're really gonna need to use. So let's play with this and see what happens. Now, rather than use animate background, let's try something else. If I want to use animate border, I need to be using something that has a border. And that's important to know when you're picking an animation. The object I'm working with doesn't have a border, so this won't do anything. If the object had a shadow, and mine doesn't, this would only work if it had a shadow. So let's do something simple like, let's say fade in. This is what fade in looks like. Now remember, I need to set this to normal so we can see what it looks like. This means the object's gonna fade in. It's gonna take one second to do it, and I'm getting a preview of that at the normal direction. Let's change this to five seconds. Remember, these are milliseconds. So now I've slowed down that fade in considerably. I'm having it last five seconds. I'm gonna have it do it five times before it stops. But let's apply this animation to my object. This is just a preview. The preview is always just a simple square, but here's what it looks like with my object. I'm gonna click OK. You can see we've added this animation. We're gonna click OK. Now here's what happens when the page loads. I gotta click F5 to preview it so we can get the page. And as you can see, it's fading in over a period of about five seconds. Oh, and by the way, it's gonna do it five times because that's what I told it to do. So after the fifth time it fades in at that rate, it'll just appear and stop. Okay, that kind of gives you a pretty good idea of what you can do with animations. Let's play with a few more just to have some fun with it and you can see some, at least some of the configurations we can work with. So I'm gonna close this page. I have something I've already added, so I'm gonna move this image out of the way. And this one is a copy of that image, but with a different animation. Let's see what this one has. When I added this animation, I chose the animation called Transform Shake, and you can see it's shaking. I have it last for one second, and I'm only having it do it twice. I'm going in the normal direction. Doesn't look that different if you alternate it. It doesn't look that different if you reverse it because this is the kind of animation that is just shaking, so you can't really see a difference. So some of these don't really apply the same as they would to another one. So let's just leave it at that and watch what happens when we apply this animation to the object. So I'm gonna click F5 so we can preview it. And when the page loads, we'll see this image shaking. And again, it did it twice. I'm gonna reload the page so we can see it again. So I'm refreshing my browser you can see it shake twice. Okay, kind of fun. Let's do another one. I made another image here, copy of the same image, and I just added these animations earlier to make the video go a little bit more succinctly. This one's called a transform hinge. And here's what it does. You can see the preview of it. I have it last for one second. I do it twice. This one I have reversed because it does look different reversed. Look what happens when we go normal. It just kind of hangs there and falls. If I reverse that, it does the opposite. It hangs there and then it goes back up, see? And if we went to alternate, it would do a little bit of both. If we go alternate reverse, it'll just go back and forth. You can see a slight difference. So this is an example of an animation that would where the direction really matters. So let's put it back on reverse, I kind of like that. We'll have it do it twice, the iteration is two. Let's slow it down a little bit though. I think I want to make this go three seconds. Let's see if that looks right. Yeah, see, so it kind of dangles twice and then it stops. Here's what it looks like when applied to a real object. The page loads, the animation is in effect. There's the second iteration and there it is. 
you can see these can become quite fun, quite complex too. And you'll see that uh, it's a little bit addictive when you start playing with these. A couple more just so we can see what they do. So here's one that uh, is called a rotate in. Let me click on it so we can edit it. And you can see what it's doing here in the preview. It's pretty simple. Oh, I only had to do it once, so you're not going to be able to see it unless I change this to more. Remember, if I go negative one, it's infinite. It will just keep going. And that's kind of what these default to is just so that while you're in preview, you can see what it's going to do. But if you did this on your web page, it would probably be pretty annoying because it would never stop. Let's try it anyway. So we're going to do a transform rotate in animation. It's, a very, it's really quick. It only takes one second to run, but we're going to run it forever. So we click OK, click OK, and let's preview this and watch what it does. It's going to rotate and keep rotating because we have it set to run forever. You get the idea. You have full control. So let's go like this. And um, in fact, let's, let's get another one here. I'll remove this. I'm going to go get this other image. And I'm just using, obviously, the same object. You would want to do this with other things. You can do it with other images. Like I said, imagine doing this with your layers, doing this with text, doing with this with uh, form controls, a lot of things you can do. This particular animation we'll demonstrate is a spring. This is what it looks like. There's the preview. Let me set that up to go more often so you can see it again. It's actually a fairly common animation I've seen on web pages before. And so we're going to go OK, OK, F5, and there it is, bouncing around. One more, and then I'll leave you alone because this could go on forever. Let's just see what this one does. I made one up here that looks like this. It's a twister down and out. Got to select it so we can see what it looks like here. Preview shows us a good idea of what's, what it's going to do. Give you more of them so you can see it. So it's going to just twist into place. This is another one where it's actually on reverse. The normal direction for this is it goes away. But I kind of wanted it to appear on the page, so I set it to reverse. So that the image would do that. Let's just set it to 1, though. And we click OK, click OK. Going to preview it. So when the page loads, the animation is triggered and the image just flies in and stops, which is probably a more sensible use of this particular effect. I'll reload the page so you can see it again. So that gives you an introduction, like I said, an introduction to animations. There are some other things you can do. As I said previously, in another video, I'm gonna show you how to trigger an animation when a user hovers on something, or when they click on something, or when they scroll down the page to a particular area of the page called the bookmark, then you can trigger that animation. And that requires us using events. But for now, it's good to understand that the animation library exists. It's really easy to get started. And that is to pick an object, to go add an animation to it, and try it out for yourself. See how much fun you can have with this in 90 Second Website Builder.